Hi, it's Lura with Living A Lot. With the passing of beloved actor and comedian Robin Williams, the media at a national level has been giving a lot of attention to the issue of depression in the American public and indeed all over the world. It's not just a passing issue, it's something that has been with us always. It's the way we handle the depression and our understanding of what's really going on that leads me to talk publicly and privately with a lot of my clients over the last several years who either have someone who's depressed in their family or in their life or they themselves, many of them, are acting out of a depressed state. A lot of people don't realize that there are different facets of depression. The most understood and, and embraced is that of the victim of depression, the one who goes inward and cannot seem to get out of bed, has no energy to go to work, doesn't uh, get involved in the circle of friends and coworkers that they normally would, uh, whether it is chronic depression, uh, event depression, uh, or something that they was congenital that they were born with. So when we're talking about depression, that's typically what comes to mind. I've talked with many people who didn't realize that they even were in a state of depression because the, the aspects of what's going on inside themselves, their behavior does not show what we typically think of as a depressed state. Depression many times can manifest itself in behavior that is very angry, that is um, a state of being in an unjust world or have been having been bullied or, or otherwise treated um, unfairly. There's a sense of unworthiness and instead of going into a flight mode, which is to run from it, to go deep inside, to lay in bed, to nurse those depressed feelings, there's a fight sense and it comes out as anger and aggression. And many times people who suffer from depression in, in these forms, myself included in the past, were treated like we were doing something wrong, like we were someone who was bad. And what was actually going on is a state of depression that was manifested in the flight stage. Um, and then we have people like our beloved Robin Williams who try to mask over to escape from feelings of depression and thoughts of depression for indeed depression is a way of thinking. Um, there are manic depression states, um, there are chemical imbalances, and it's kind of the, the chicken and the egg thing. Which comes first? The negative thinking that then the body responds to with a chemical and electrical response of a depressed state in the body, or is it a chemical issue that leads us toward more likely thoughts that are negative of either unworthiness or, or unjust treatment. So people like Robin who mask them over as a way of escaping with characters and, and fun and uh, a manic behavior that, that entertains others to, to be the clown in the family, um, especially a middle child in the birth order who has someone who they can't live up to on the on the older end and they're not getting the attention that the baby gets on the the further end will tend to be a a clown or someone who is the peacemaker and they learn how to use humor and laughter and different aspects of entertainment in order to turn focus and attention away from the chaos and, and the, the uh, drama that's going on in the room in order to entertain others. That can actually be a state of depression. If I cannot control, if I cannot manifest something that will solve the problems in the room with me or solve the problems in the world I live in, then I can at least mask them over and give them a pretty look or or 
a laughter feeling. So I've talked a lot publicly about depression. I've talked for years privately with clients and friends and others who don't understand that depression isn't just crawling in a hole and pulling the hole in over you, uh, laying in bed, uh, feeling sorrow-filled. Uh, it's It manifests itself in all kinds of ways. And the way out of depression, um, with my ministry background, I've always said there are two things that you do. One is you praise. You find something around you, something divine, something in nature, something that you're grateful for, and you send and experience gratitude uh, praise any type of blessing outside of yourself in order to turn your own attention toward something that lifts you and helps your your mindset be look for things that are blessings look for things that you are grateful for and the the second is to serve to serve someone else a lot of people along the holidays will go out and you know serve in soup kitchens or or lunch lines or uh, help underprivileged families with gift baskets because they want to have a sense of service. It turns the attention away from what's going on inside themselves and helps them to realize that all the unjustness and all the unworthiness and all the negative chatter that's going on in their head, it, it doesn't have to be about them. If they can turn it to service for someone else, then their mood will lighten. And when their mood lightens, their body feels better and they, they come to a healthier state. So to serve and to praise are two ways of dealing with depression. As a wellness practitioner, what I try to do is educate my clients, educate the public, educate the people around me that depression is most generally a way of thinking. And if you're working with a depressed client or a depressed person or even experiencing it in, within yourself, what you find is it's very difficult to find a happy memory. I'll, I always start my, my client sessions with, uh, tell me something that always makes you laugh. And someone who's dealing with a deep depression will, you know, I, I know it's out there. I, I, I know there's something. And so we'll move to, tell me something that makes you feel safe, protected, and loved. And they're, they're just stunned. They cannot come up with a thought, a memory in their lifetime where there was a, a good feeling or where they felt safe or even manifest love, what feel, love feels like in their bodies. And this is pretty typical because the mind will develop a habit of constantly focusing on the negative. You know, what's wrong with me? Uh, what bad things did I do? Uh, I'll never get ahead in this world. There's never enough money. There's never enough love. There's never enough. There's a real sense of lack mentality. And once the mind has focused on the negative thoughts long enough, it develops that negative criteria for how I'm going to be myself, have my identity, have my belief system out in the world. And so one of the things that we do is go in and either find those good memories or start journaling and and finding things that we want to do, whether it's journaling an imaginary trip we want to take someday and feeling as if we're already there, as if we're already experiencing it, giving the mind the focus of hope, of uh, heart-filled living, and then they will naturally start to ease and stabilize their metabolism for healthy thoughts, for um, hope-filled living. So what you think in your mind, the body follows. If you're sitting around thinking depressed things, if you're constantly criticizing yourself and others, you're going to feel that in your body and your body can't help but respond to the negativity. That's why stress kills. That's why stress is the number one killer of relationships, of health, of well-being, of, of um, you know, life itself. Um, because if we're living in that state of deprivation, of lack, of unworthiness, of hurt, then our body can only feel as if that is our truth. So whenever you're, you're feeling yourself depressed, grieving, sorrowful, reach out and serve. Reach out and praise, worship, be in awe of a walk in nature, something to lift your eyes up off of yourself and out into the world and then start paying attention to happy thoughts, 
to what you want your life to be like. Find a different perspective. Talk to a friend. Go out with a friend and, and have a Coke or, or you know, have a glass of tea. Sit and talk at the park. Uh, read a good book. Something that uplifts you. Uh, immerse yourself in something that feels good because what you think your body follows and depression is a state of negative thinking so let's let's try to lift one another up when people call me and they're having depressed thoughts or or a bad day even my goal as a friend as a mother or as a practitioner is to reach down and to lift them up um, many people feel like if if I call you you have to get on the train with me and we both have to feel bad that does no one any good so if if someone calls you lift them up allow them much like the legacy that Robin Williams left to to be brought up another level with you to be honored and respected as a human person who is worthy of this life and of a sense of happiness give them a new perspective and find in yourself a new perspective I hope this helps understanding depression and understanding that you don't have to live with it you can change it when you when you finally hit that spot that says I'm done with this then reach out find a practitioner find a friend find that that piece of nature or that piece of divine that will change your perspective. This is Lura with Living A Lot. Living well. Bye-bye.